In this video we'll be installing Bookstack on Windows 10 to be used as a local application. In other words, we're not installing it on a website. We're installing it locally on our hard drive to be used locally through the web browser. Because it is a web application, it still requires the installation of a web server and configuration. So let's go ahead and get started. I've opened up the Bookstack website, which is bookstackapp.com. I've opened up the installation documentation, which has all the information you need to install Bookstack on various platforms. I've scrolled down to the manual installation, which is what we're going to use for Windows. I've opened up the Apache Virtual Host Configuration page, which is a sample file that you can use for configuration of Apache, Apache being the web server that we're going to use. We're going to use XAMPP, which is a package that includes Apache, an SQL server, PHP, and more. So I've opened up the XAMPP web page, and you'll find the link for download right here. I've also opened up the Git web page, which is going to download a copy of Bookstack onto our hard drive and we can download Git with the download link here. I've opened up the Composer web page and opened up the download page where we can download Composer via this link here. I've already downloaded these three applications onto my hard drive and you can see them here. So let's go ahead and install XAMPP first. It's going to warn us that we should not install it on the C drive in the program files folder because of permission issues. That's because of the Windows UAC, which we would have to disable to uh, make sure that that isn't causing an issue, the user account control. Um, since we're not going to do that, I'm just going to install it on a different drive. It doesn't matter where you put it. So I'm putting it on my J drive under the XAMPP folder. It's asking if we want to start the control panel, and I'm going to allow it because we're going to use it anyway. So I'll minimize that for now. Let's install Git. Just keep going through the pages until you get to where it installs. Uncheck the view release notes if you don't want to see the release notes. And then Composer. We can install it for all users or for just the current user. I'm just going to do all users. We want to make sure that it can see the path for php.exe in the XAMPP slash PHP folder. And if it doesn't, we need to point it to that particular exe. Okay, those are installed. Now I'm going to open up a command prompt and we're going to get started setting up the uh, now I'm going to open up a command prompt now that the applications are installed I'm going to open up a command prompt so that we can have that available for us. We'll need to be using that. So I go to Windows Systems, Command Prompt, Run as Administrator. I'm going to switch to my J drive, which is what I'm using. And if we do a directory, we can see that we have XAMPP folder here. We'll go ahead and go into the XAMPP folder and the htdocs folder, which is the default website folder. And we're going to go to the installation instructions and grab the first command that it gives us. And we're going to paste that 
using right click and press enter. And this is going to download a copy of uh, Bookstack. Now we should have a Bookstack folder, and we do. I'm going to rename it to be lowercase. So we go to htdocs. I'm just going to do that. OK, now let's continue. We're going to edit our PHP file, which is our init file for the PHP settings. We need to enable a few items. There it is. So we scroll down until we see extension. There it is. We need to enable the LDAP by taking the uh, semicolon out from in front of it. Same with the GD. And we also need to do it for zip. Those three are all we need to um, activate. Then we just hit Control S to save if we're using Notepad. Typically, Control S will save. And now that that's done, we can go ahead and run the Composer install, which is the next step. So we go down here, and we select this, copy it, and we need to go into Bookstack so that it does it in there because it's looking for a file called uh, composer.json. So we're going to right click and it's going to do some installation. Next, what we're going to do is start up our servers. And we're going to go into our PHP admin, which is this button right here. We're going to create a new user by going to user accounts and then add user account. We're going to call this user librarian going to use localhost for the host and we're going to just use a password of decimal. We need to retype that in. Now we could check these boxes and create a database with the same name as the username with uh, permissions already set but we're going to use a different name for our database so I'm just going to click go down here and it did create the new user Next, we're going to go to databases, and we're going to create a database called Bookstack. Just create. Then we're going to go home, which is this home up here, and back to user accounts. And then we're going to click on librarian, and then database, and then select Bookstack and click go. And then we're going to check all. If you want to adjust these, now is the time to do it. Otherwise, just leave them as they are. Click Go, and now we have permissions for the uh, Bookstack database with our username librarian. Now that that's set up, we need to go and edit a file that is located in our XAMPP htdocs Bookstack folder. This is the file here, but we need to rename it to .env. So we're just going to delete that part of it. Then we're going to edit it. The first thing we need to change is this right here. We need to change this from HTTPS to just HTTP. Then we're going to set this for localhost, colon, and then the port we're going to use, which is going to be 8080. Next, we're going to set our database name which we created which was bookstack 
our username, which is librarian, and our password, which is decimal. And then that should be it. We can go down here and put uh, localhost here if we want. And then also, let's see, let me make sure. Yep, we're all good. We can save that. I hit Control S as a shortcut to save. And then next, what we need to do is generate a key which is going to be written right here. And how we do that is we go back to the installation documentation and we grab this command here and then we paste it here with a right click. Answer yes and it sets the key. And if we go back, open the file, we see that there is a key there now. Next, what we need to do is edit a couple of the other configuration files, this time for Apache. This is for Bookstack itself. So we need to go back to XAMPP, to Apache, conf, extra, and we're going to edit the SSL file. Notice this listen here, 443, leave that as is. Go down here and you'll see 443 again. And what we need to do is change this to localhost and this to localhost. And we're going to copy this path right here. So I'm going to select that, press control C to copy it. And we're going to save this and I'm going to open up another notepad so I have a place to copy it so I can use it later. Um, next what we're going to do is edit another file which is called vhosts and we'll find that in the same folder. And this is the virtual host configuration that's located right here. I'm going to select all this and copy it which I already have it selected. Make sure you get everything. You don't want to miss the brackets. And then we're going to take that and paste it into this file which has everything commented out anyway. It's using the hashtag as a comment to uh, deactivate any of these lines. So they're just comments, they're ignored. So I'm going to select all that, control V to paste, and that's going to paste our uh, sample host file that we had copied in place of what was there. I'm going to set a listen for 8080 and I'm going to change this to 8080 and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set this to XAMPP htdocs as well as this and then down here Actually, first I need to change this. Then down here, we're going to use the uh, path that we had copied and put that in for the log path instead of using this because uh, previously it didn't work. It might work this time, but I'm not taking a chance. I'm just going to use the actual path for it. Um, and that should be that. So I hit Control S to save. Next, we need to stop and restart the server so that we can take on new settings that we had saved in the configuration files. Keep in mind that you shouldn't have to stop and restart the SQL server, just the Apache server, but I did it anyway. And then uh, we need to get that command, which is migrate copy that, go in here, paste, yes, and then it's going to uh, do some database work, and that should be it. We should be able to go to localhost 8080, and now we have Bookstack. The username is admin at admin.com, and the password is password. Now that we're in, 
we can create a shelf. And this is going to be a bookshelf of sorts. So we'll call this one programming. Next, we need to create our first book for our bookshelf. So we'll create a new book. And this one we'll call uh, Java Script 101. And then we're going to just uh, put a short description. Now that we've created our book, we need to create either a chapter or a page. Chapter is what pages are going to go under, so let's do that. This is going to be um, introduction. So now that we have our chapter, we can create our first page. And this page will be introduction. And this is our text editor, so we can format everything we want. It's fully featured. We can um, add links, photos. Uh, we can tag other pages in other books or other books or other bookshelves. So we can uh, do all kinds of things in the editor. Once we're done, we can save that and we have our new page, which is right here. We can create pages outside of chapters. Let's say we go to the book itself. We can create another page and it's going to be separate. We can move that, let's say we want that to be in a chapter, we can move it to a chapter by simply clicking on move and then selecting the chapter we want to go to. And now it's inside the chapter of introduction. So that's how Bookstack works. Um, there are so many other things you can do with this. You can export to certain file types. Um, yeah, you'll just have to play with it. But you can also go in here and edit your profile. You can set it to dark mode. Um, you can go in and add users or change the user that you are logging in with and so on. So it's fully featured. Um, as to how you back things up, well, that would probably be the export because this is being stored in a SQL database, it's uh, not readily accessible. Um, in other words, there aren't files that you can access and or move or copy to another drive. So you would have to go in and export uh, what you want to export and save it that way. And then, um, then you can restore it manually if you have to. But anyway, it's a neat tool. Um, that is how to install Bookstack on Windows 10.